So now it's time to create a template. So it's back to snippets.txt, and I'm going to highlight and copy lines 36 to 43. And now I'm going to go to my index.html file and paste this code directly below the script tags at the bottom. Give a little white space so we can see what we're doing. Save that. So I've enclosed all my code inside of a script tag starting on line 34, and it has two attributes, ID and type. ID will act as a hook for the template settings I'm about to define in my view object. It will tell the view how to structure my model data. Now type needs to be here, but it absolutely cannot be text forward slash JavaScript. Otherwise, the browser will try to execute it as JavaScript, which I don't want because this will break my code altogether. It's convention to define it as text forward slash template, so that's what I've done here. Now inside this tag, I have to find the HTML structure for my model data. Pretty. It's a pound sign followed by this specially formatted tag here, using syntax that's sometimes referred to as low dash syntax. This tag here, along with all the other tags that are formatted like this, they're referencing my model properties that I've already defined up to this point. So if you remember, one of those properties was link. This href property will look at whatever the link property is of whatever instance it looks at at that given moment and insert this data into this spot. And it will do the same for the other model properties I've defined here. So looking at the image tag, it will look at the IMG property I've already set up for my model instances and place it within this attribute and apply the same logic for the alt tag on the same line and insert the name property for my model instance. This is also happening for the three li tags going from line 37 to line 39. They're looking at the name, price, and color properties of my model instance and will insert these property values inside them. Note that the image tag and all the li tags have classes, image for the image and flower info for each li tag. These are also referencing some pre-built CSS styling in my style sheet. Now that I've created the template on my web page, I need to tell the view that this is the template to target when it starts populating it with model info. I do that with the template method. So let's go back to snippets.txt and scroll down a bit. Highlight the line of code on line 51 and go back to single flower view.js. And I'm going to paste this code directly below the class name. Now I'm defining the template property here on line 10. The definition includes a reference to underscore.template, which is an underscore method. It's the method that will actually build out the template. I do have to tell this method where to build it, however, and I'm doing it by passing it parameters. So you can tell by this dollar sign here that I'm using jQuery to do this. This is the first time I'm using jQuery in the project. I don't have to use it, I could use plain JavaScript, but in this case, it's quicker to just use jQuery. jQuery is targeting an element already on my web page. It's the element with an ID of flower element, which is the ID of the script tag template I just defined on my web page. I'm chaining this element with jQuery's.html method, meaning that it will take my model data and place it inside my template. Now at this point, Backbone knows it has to populate a template with some model data. It just doesn't know where that model data is. I'm going to tell it where the data is with the help of the render method. So it's back to snippets.txt. And I'm going to highlight line 59 to 63 and copy it. And I'm going to paste it directly below my template tag. So as previously mentioned, Render looks at all the logic I've defined up to this point, the tag name, the class name, and the template property, and builds out the element. And I'm telling it to do this with the flower template variable here on line 13. 
the this.template method is a reference to the template property unique to my view, and this is defined on line 10. I'm passing a parameter to this template, and it's a reference to the model to the view at some point, and it's converting the model data to a JSON-like JavaScript object with the toJSON method. It's key to point out that this line of code is looking for model data, but it doesn't know which specific model to look at as yet. We'll get to that when we start to build the collection view, but we have a few more things to cover. The code on line 14 is referencing this dot dollar sign L, and I want to discuss L for a moment. As a reminder, the point of my model view is to create a web page element for my single model instance. Now I did define that element as an article tag on line seven, and I did give this article tag a class name backbone as one entire package as an easy reference. L also has a dollar sign in front of it, meaning I'm referencing it with jQuery in this line of code. It is populating this L with whatever parameters I've passed to it. The parameter being passed to it in this case is flower template which is a reference to the variable directly above on line 13, which again is a reference to the model data in a JSON-like format. We don't yet know which specific model, but we're getting to that. So we're done creating our model view at this point, but none of our data is viewable on a web page yet. We'll accomplish this when we create the collection view in the next movie.